All right, it's hard, very hard after that talk. This is about the different versions of 802.11. Oh, I think I made a mistake there. Of course, it's not 11x, it's 1x, because I'm talking about the different versions of the IEEE standard for local and metropolitan area networks, port-based network access control. And, well, it can be rated at 802.11x? Of course not, because it's not a wireless standard. If you do it, you get in trouble with this lady. But you are probably in good company. Even the best ones write it this way. Don't blame a social media team. But starting with, two, with CWNA, you better shouldn't do this mistake. So, no, it's wrong. What about 802.11 small x? Seems to be quite accepted when talking about multiple wireless amendments. Personally, I don't like it because you always need more context to understand what someone is talking about. So, no. What about 2.1 small x? It's get better. And it seems to be accepted with every major vendor because they all use it in documentation, graphical user interfaces, CLI, and so on. But the standard uses a capital X. And a capital X is not more expensive than a small x, even with lefty the salesman. So, no, the one and only version to write it is dot .1x with couple of x. But back to topic. When we do wireless captures, we see our different dot .1x versions, 2001, 2004, 2010, and the question is, do we have to take care about that as a wireless engineer? Is it relevant for us? And what I learned from Keith is conclusion first, or nearly first. Not at all. But why? And what are the differences? First, we don't configure the dot one x version. We don't tell our system, use 2001, use 2004, and so on. A vendor implements one version based on the needs he has for specific functionality. And we have a couple of different versions, four major versions, amendments, and the standard itself defines what has to be done if two systems that communicate with each other have different versions? If I'm system A, I get a, B, a PDU, and the sending system has a different version, it's always interpreted as a lower one, and everything that is not understood is ignored. And the version could even change within one session. This is my iPhone connecting to my Catalyst wireless controller with a centralized authentication. On the top, the traffic from the AP to the client. On the bottom, from the client to the IP. We see that the EAP exchange is done with version 2010. And there's a good reason for that. But when the distributed four-way handshake is done, it's immediately 2004. The iPhone uses version 2001 for the EAP exchange, but again, 2004 for the four-way handshake. Um, yes, there it is. The different versions. I don't have every feature here, but that what I think is interesting. And yes, most of the stuff is not relevant for wireless. 2001, initial version, the header protocol version is one. There is already a key descriptor to communicate key information, but only for RC4. You need to be a little bit older to remember that. The standard defines there's a AAA protocol to communicate between the authenticator and the authentication server, and it's expected to be radios. But the standard also says it could be something else. 2004 only slightly changes. It is more detailed, more explanations, more clear. But some small changes are there. For example, we have a new key descriptor type for robust security networks, and we use that for our four-way handshake. The RC4 key descriptor type is defined as deprecated, and it even mentions diameter as a possible AAA protocol. And we know the huge success of diameter in the enterprises because it's double as good as radios. 
What I found interesting, on the left, a picture from 2001. We see our supplicant, authenticator, authentication server, and we have the controlled and uncontrolled port on our authenticator. The 2004 system uh, standard defines there also could be a controlled and uncontrolled port on the supplicant, and two authentications could be coupled together. Hmm. We have more security considerations. The two most relevant are addressed in version 2010 of the standard. At 2004, it also details the radius integration security considerations because they are also quite relevant. And for the dot one elf, dot one eleven integration, it states dot one x only provides a framework, but all the details are defined somewhere else in the wireless standard. For example, when do we do EIP? Before the association, after the association, dot one x doesn't tell us. Now we use an increased protocol version of two. 2010, this was a major change. Everything was done new. And the biggest change was the addition of MacSec and Mac security agreement. In wireless, we had the link encryption since forever. But for wired communication, it started 2006, where 802.1AE, MacSec, was standardized. And this was incorporated into the dot one x standard. It also states that it's not meant to replace the way we do encryption in wireless networks. So we have one technology for wired and one technology for wireless LANs. The RC4 key descriptor type is still deprecated and the protocol version is incremented to number three. 2020, the newest version, is again very similar to the 2020, to, to 2010 version, but it incorporated two amendments that were released in between, a young data model for all these automation stuff, and we have extensions for the MAXEC key agreement protocol. For example, um, MAXEC, from the beginning did something, uh, some things a little bit better than wireless. They directly started with the Gula counter mode for encryption, which is believed to be one of the best for protecting data in transit. And with these amendments, we can also use AS-256. And we have larger packet numbers, which are important if we want to protect high-speed links with MagSec uh, 100 gig plus. And Still, we have these extensions, more capabilities. The protocol version was not increased. It stays at version three. Whereby within our packet captures, where we see the dot one x version, we won't find version 2020. But for these new capabilities, it's not needed because the MAXEC key agreement protocol has its own version number. So the dot one x version doesn't need to be increased. The RC4 key descriptor type is not mentioned anymore. It's gone. We only have our RSN and key encryptor type, descriptor type. Well, and these are the different versions that we have in dot one x And with that, you are hopefully well prepared if you get to the one million question. And that's it. <laughs> <laughs>